I think I have four options that I could choose from for what I did this Monday night. Number one was I could sit there and do what I've done most of the football season, and that's watch Monday night football. Although knowing that on the surface heading in, it was a Cowboys-Redskins game that I really didn't have any interest in seeing and had all the smell and sense of it was going to be pretty brutally bad. Number two was to sit there and watch Monday Night Raw and stick with that for three hours, knowing that pretty much the same things were going to be in play for that show, too. That it didn't look like it was going to be any good, and it was going to be three hours of my life. I would ultimately never get back and would leave that show feeling like I wasted my time on another piece of crap. Number three is I could decide to maximize my suck on Monday night and watch both of them back and forth and just sit there and waste my Monday night away or option four, figure out something better to do with my life. Well, instead of being smart and sitting there and choosing option four, unfortunately, I decided to choose option three, which lent myself even more, frankly, to option number two, which was tuning into Monday Night Raw more so than a stupid-ass NFC Least game. And no matter how good the finish was, it doesn't change the fact that the game absolutely sucked. Well, at least I can say this about Raw. I didn't have to worry about a good finish because this shit was just bad from beginning to end. Some of the buzz heading into the show was that they had sent out some fan survey and they were going to do something different on Raw, and I didn't really believe it because the proof's got to be in the pudding, and there's no pudding, there's no fucking proof because this crap is bad. It's been bad for a little bit now. It's going to continue to be bad. It just gets progressively worse throughout 2015. I'm sorry. I know I come across this way sometimes, but this time it's got to be said. If you really actually enjoy this shit at this point in time, have your standards dropped that fucking low? As a wrestling fan, as a sports entertainment fan, whatever the hell you want to call yourself, have your standards dropped that low? Has it gotten that bad? Because what in the fuck would make you think that this was anything close to remotely entertaining in any way, shape, or form? I mean, seriously. <sighs> Just bad. And you know it is right from the jump. You've got the League of Nations, the family, the ECW Originals, the Wyatt family, all these fucking groups and factions just coming out together, and then they're going to have a fucking 16-man, 14 tag match for whatever the fuck purpose. What you know all that means is that you're going to see these people still throughout the night, meaning that in three hours the WWE still can't find a way to effectively fill even half of that fucking show. And who comes up with these fucking names? The League of Nations. <laughs> the League of Nations. I realize Vince and Kevin Dunn are proud, tried and true, racist and prejudicial, discriminatory motherfuckers. But do we have to pull this shit out of the Woodrow Wilson playbook? The League of Fucking Nations! The League of Nations! Stay tuned next week to find out who's going to be a part of the new United Nations! Holy Christ Almighty! And then we'll get a fucking NATO faction and oh shit! A coalition of the willing! Can you imagine the possibilities? The family. You know, I'm okay with having some type of babyface group like Reigns and Ambrose and the Usos. I'm cool with that, actually. But you know, this is just going to be some more PG bullshit. You know, you can have heel factions. It's fine. Having a babyface group, having actual friends be friends is not the worst thing in the world. But the family just feels like something that's going to fucking suck. The ECW Originals. Oh, it's not bad enough they brought Tommy Dreamer back. Now here's fucking Rhino. And I get what you're getting to with the whole fucking Wyatt family thing. But two plus years later, the Wyatt family are just still doing the same fucking shit. And it doesn't fucking matter. They're becoming a tired, played out, lame ass act if they haven't already been for some period of time. Now we'll throw the ECW Originals into the mix. This company doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. On the one hand, they want to sit there and talk all this good shit about trying to build for the future and focusing on the next generation. But yet, here you are, yet again, having to rely on these guys. And what makes it so bad is it's not just that you bring in the Dudleys and Rhino and Tommy Dreamer. That's one thing, because they can still serve a purpose. They can still fill a role. The fact of the matter is the WWE doesn't even know what to fucking do with these types of guys anymore. I mean, seriously, you've got the Dudleys, Tommy Dreamer, and Rhino. How fucking difficult can it be? For a while there, they had even forgotten about the Dudleys entirely. How the hell do you forget about the damn Dudleys? 
one of the most popular tag teams in history, and you've completely forgotten about them, and now you stick them in this schmaz of a fucking feud with the Wyatt family. The Wyatt family! The same group that just got their brains bashed in by the Brothers of Destruction, mid-40s Kane, and 50-year-old, get the fuck off my lawn, no shits given, taker at Survivor Series! And this is how we started off! This is how we start off a Raw. I mean, it only went downhill from there. Dolph Ziggler, Kevin Owens. Now, surely, as always, this is a hardcore fan circle jerk. But again, as I talk about in these type of situations, you should be rebelling against this, and you should be pissed off about this. And what always frustrates me about this company is the way that they'll get hot on somebody, they'll make them a world champion, and then six months later or years later, they still don't fucking matter. We don't treat them like they're a former world champion. And I've said plenty about Dolph Ziggler over the years, believe me. But at the end of the day, this is a former two-time world champion, a multiple-time mid-card champion. And you're jobbing them out in a worthless fucking match to Kevin Owens with no buildup, no real fucking reason for it to happen, and nothing really being accomplished. You can sit there and talk all that shit you want about Ambrose chewing his popcorn. I don't know why anybody would want to have that feeling of having to grab their popcorn to watch this shit. Because it's fucking terrible. Dolph Ziggler annoys the piss out of me for many reasons that I've talked about ad nauseum in the past. But the simple fact of the matter is, if you were going to pay him, if you were going to have him be on your roster, the simple fact of the matter is, is that he does have a following. He does have a fan base. And I most certainly know, if I am a part of the WWE creative processes, especially at the highest level, I'm going to figure out some type of way to utilize this guy in some capacity to where I can actually get some mileage out of him. I can actually get something out of him. And he can help make somebody else into something. Not just random, randomly thrown together fucking Raw matches where the whole point is just to get to something between Owens and Ambrose. Then why have Owens beat Ziggler to fucking begin with? This is dumb. Thankfully, one of the saving graces of this show every week is the fucking New Day. They are outstanding. And while I still don't like the way they are featured in the sense of the direction that the company went with them in their characters... They've taken shit, and they've shined it up, and they've done the best with it they possibly can. But I'm sorry now. We're selling freaking unicorn horns. They're wearing unicorn horns. Now, it's good if that merch is moving, and I most certainly am assured that that unicorn horn is selling, and selling a lot. But God damn it! You're taking this entertaining team and basically, basically putting pointed dildos on their fucking heads. Pointy dildos! And while all the other things they do, to me, are great, they still can't mask the fact that A, they've got fucking pointed dildos on their fucking heads, and then B, later on in the night, they come out there to celebrate with Team Bad and they're fucking twerking. News flash to Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn. Not every black person likes to twerk. Believe me, I know. That's what it all comes down to. This is what it's always all about. It's about perpetuating stereotypes and doing this type of dumb shit. You finally get Sasha on TV, keeping her as far away from the fucking Divas title as possible. And this is the type of stupid shit that we put her in. They're fucking twerking with the pointed dick wearing on their head New Day. Oh, Christ almighty. And then we get fucking Miz TV. And I'm sure some of you are thinking that it's great. You've got Paige. You've got Charlotte. You've got the nature boy, Ric Flair. Woo! How fucking stupid is this? Oh, Miz sighting. That's something else. Only apparently he's got something with Neville. Who the fuck knows? Who the fuck cares? Well, that way, now all of a sudden, Charlotte and Ric Flair are there. So now Charlotte is beginning this heel turn while all the while Paige was just fucking turning heel. All the while, it's the exact same shit they always do with this stupid fucking Divas division. Pointless face-to-heel turns, pointless heel-to-face turns, heel-to-face turns that make no sense, face-to-heel turns that make no sense. No real business for this match to even go on because Charlotte has already beaten Paige. So, of course, we're going to have it again. It's just dumb. Take your Divas revolution and blow it out your ass, and punch yourself square in the cunt, okay? Because it's fucking stupid. And what else is stupid? 
the fuck are they doing with Rusev and Lana? And for that matter, Ryback, that whole shit was fucking dumb. ADR, Jack Swagger, Zeb Coulter, what in the fuck is going on here? But then when it gets to the ultimate what the fuck of the night, we get to the main event segment. And you know, and take, it, take it for me, somebody with some experience in this, it's one thing to come up with catchphrases. It's one thing to have people remember things that you say. Those of you that watch this, you remember me for different things that I say. Whether you always agree with it or like it or not, there are certain things that I'm associated with. You know, among other things, that I always reference Triple H as God. You know there is a deep-rooted history in talking about Randy Orton's raging ring boner, his sleeve tattoos, his construction worker beard, and his love of baby oil. You know these are things that I'm associated with. You know, it's, it's what I'm known for, among other things. Ding dong, dumb dicks would be another. And surely some of you will chime in with some of my other classics and not so classic. But nonetheless, with that said, one of the things you have to be careful on is not running something into the crowd. <laughs> not notorious for doing that. Reigns made a little semi-funny. He's talking about how Seamus doesn't have potatoes down there. He's got freaking tater tots. So that's great. Hey, at least if WWE powers that be are going to participate in some racism and some prejudice, yeah, why shouldn't the top Samoan babyface do the same? He's just like all the other white guys. He's going to hate on the fucking Irish, too. Hey, you got tater tots down there. But then he keeps going back to the well about fucking tater tots. It'll let it go. It was one quick funny. Stop revisiting it many multiple fucking times. But oh my Christ. You know, it really didn't dawn on me until this segment was that this is actually a way that they're trying to build up their world title match TLC. <laughs> They've had Reigns blow through so many people. You leave Sheamus laying out, and this is how they choose to build up to their title match at TLC. <laughs> the reality of this actually being the title match at TLC didn't really fully strike me until this segment. <laughs> And then what really, really on top of that didn't strike me until that moment was that TLC was actually this Sunday. Oh, my God. <laughs> you can take, take your special stipulations and what have you. Shove them up your ass. The build-up to this has been god awful. This show is going to be so fucking stupid. Because either way, nobody wins. Reigns wins the belt. People are pissed. Sheamus keeps his title. And we're still fucking bored. You've got the, one of the hottest acts you have, easily your hottest act that you have right now that you did, New Day. They're, point, they're walking around with pointed dildos on their fucking heads, twerking with the diva that most fans actually want to see get a chance in Sasha Banks. You've got Haiti Hart tripping over Zach Coulter's card so that way they can fight backstage. We've got a WWE that's turning Charlotte heel when Paige is still technically a heel. So now we're going to try and put her this fucking God, this remedy is so fucking stupid. Who fucking likes this shit? <laughs> Worst of all, who thinks this shit is any fucking good at all? This should insult your t intelligence as a wrestling fan. So much randomly thrown together shit. No character development. No interesting, compelling story to tell. Another three hours of all filler, no fucking killer. Perfectly suited for this company and its current direction. <laughs>